This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. <laughs> Lever Brothers, makers of Rinso, R-I-N-S-O, Soapy Rich Rinso, present Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. Front boy, did you sign the register, please, sir? Right here. Yes, Miss Manletter. Is there some trouble with your room? Oh, no, it's fine, thank you. I was just wondering, do you know a Mr. Boston Blackie when you see him? No, I don't know him. I'm sorry, Miss Manletter. Well, thanks, just the same. I was supposed to meet him here in the lobby, but I have no idea what he looks like. My uncle arranged the appointment before I left San Francisco. Oh, there's a man standing over by the newsstand who looks as if he were waiting for someone. Oh? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sure that must be Mr. Blackie. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Hello there. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me. Wasn't I supposed to meet you here? Uh, uh, you're you, aren't you? Yes. At least Uncle should have had you wear a white carnation. According to Uncle, white carnations don't stay white long in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Uncle told me that you were very witty. Uh, but they do in San Francisco, you know. <laughs> well, shall we go? Where to? Oh, no, don't uh, tell me. I'd rather be surprised. All right, let's go. Oh, clerk, I found the man I was looking for. Thank you for your trouble. Uh, no trouble at all. Hello? Room clerk speaking. Hello. Uh, would you do me a favor, please? I'm supposed to meet a young lady in your lobby, and I've been delayed. Would you have a page, please? Her name is Alice Manletter. Miss Manletter? Yes. Why, she just left here a minute ago. She met someone she was expecting, and she left with him. Well, that's impossible. Miss Manletter doesn't know anyone in New York. Well, she told me she had an appointment with a Mr. Boston Blackie, and that's the man she left here with. But that can't be possible. And why not? Because I'm Boston Blackie. In a few moments, we will meet Boston Blackie. But uh, right now, a thought about the weather. I'll bet it sometimes doesn't seem fair to you ladies. Here it is, summer, blistering hot days, days when you ought to be taking it easy. And what happens? You've got a bigger wash than ever to worry about. More towels, more of the kids' play, play clothes, more of your own wash dresses, more shirts of dad's, more everything. Well, you couldn't pick a more ideal time than now to switch to soapy rich Rinso. With Rinso, even the biggest, grimiest wash goes like a breeze. As little as five minutes per load with Rinso in your washer, and your clothes are sparkling Rinso white, clean as a whistle. <whistles> and Rinso is safe for washable colors, too. Leaves them Rinso bright after dozens of dozens of washings. You'll be mighty proud of your Rinso wash, and proud, too, that you bought the big green and yellow package that made it so easy to do. Better get Rinso before next wash day. <laughs> And now, meet Boston Blackie, radio's newest adventure star. Meet Boston Blackie, enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. Uh, listen, clerk, try to think. What did the man look like? I mean, the one Miss Manlet had left with. I don't know, Mr. Blackie. You're rather good-looking yes. about your height and build. But Miss Manletter didn't know anybody in New York. Her uncle told me that when he asked me to meet her. Well, I'm sorry I can't help you. Well, thanks just the same. Oh, uh, here's my card. Mm -hmm. If Miss Manletter returns, have a call this number, will you? Yes, I will. Taxi, sir? No, oh, no, thanks. Uh, look, Dorman, did you happen to notice a man and a girl leaving here about ten minutes ago? A, a pretty girl and a man about my height? Uh, yes, sir. Come to think of it, I did call a taxi for a couple of that, that answers that description. Well, do you remember which cab it was? Uh, yes, it was the one uh, Mike O'Hara drives. Oh, oh uh, that's O'Hara just pulling up to the end of the line now. Well, thanks a lot. Here, buy your wife some flowers. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, O'Hara? Yes, sir? You just drove a man and a young lady somewhere. I want to go where they went. Oh, you want to follow someone? <laughs> You're a bright lad, O'Hara. I don't want to get into any trouble. 
Maybe you'd better get another cab. Oh, you won't get into any trouble. You see, I'm Inspector Faraday of the Homicide Department. Oh, Inspector Faraday. That's right. Okay, step on it. Oh, sure, Inspector. I'll go as fast as I can. Uh, this is it. This is the place I left them off. Right in front of this store. Oh, thanks. Uh, here, buy yourself a couple of cigars. Oh, thank you, sir. Gee, I'll buy you a box. No. <laughs> well, how do you do? I, uh... I'm looking for a young couple who came here a few minutes ago. You're looking for a couple. I'm looking for a couple. I'll take a single yet. Nobody comes here. Only Pop and me. Even Pop ain't here now. They have nobody else. See for yourself. Well, thanks. Uh, may I use your telephone, please? Certainly. That'll be ten cents. Oh, um... You wouldn't be interested in buying anything, would you, mister? No, no thanks. No. Well, nobody ever buys anything. Hello, Ashley Hotel. I'd like to speak to the room clerk, please. Uh, say, Mom, have you got any chewing gum? Chewing gum, I ask for. Is he kidding? Room clerk speaking. Uh, this is Boston Blackie. Have you had any word from Miss Alice Manletter? Oh, Mr. Blackie, Miss Manletter's been trying to reach you. She wants you to come down here to see her right away. She's in room 305. Well, thank you very much. I'll be right over. <laughs> Three, please. Third floor. Oh, thank you. 301, 303. Oh, here we are, 305. Come in. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So you're Boston Blackie. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see you, Miss Manletter. You know, your uncle asked me to look out for you, and then you disappear. Well, you didn't even give me a chance. Oh, you mean this morning? Yes. No, I, I just met a friend, that's all. He followed me from San Francisco. Well, I don't blame him. I'd have followed you, too. Uh, how was your trip? Oh, wonderful. This is my first time in New York, you know. I, I practically lived in a dream all the way here. <laughs> well, how do you like what you've seen of it? <laughs> wonderful. You know, uh, I'd like to show you the real town. Oh, uh, well, I'd like to, only I, I've sort of an engagement tonight. Oh, the same fellow? Mm -hmm. You haven't wasted much, much, much time before I came here, have you? <laughs> only the 18 years since I, before I came here. Isn't that enough? Well, that's enough for me to be running along, Alice. Oh, here's my phone number, and uh, if you want anything, you just call. How about lunch tomorrow, huh? Oh, I'd love it. Thanks, Mr. Blackie, for everything. Oh, everything is nothing. Good night, Alice. Twenty-five, boss. Nice shooting. Oh, Shorty, she's a beautiful girl. Look, why don't you forget things for a minute? Give me a good reason. Fifteen. Just like I'm telling you, boss, your hand ain't steady. You need some more practice. Well, this Maxim silencer doesn't fit this gun too well. Oh, how come the new gun, Blackie? Where's your old one? Well, uh, well, you see, Shorty, I, um... You what? Well, I, <laughs> I hate to admit it, but, uh, I guess I was robbed. Boston Blackie robbed? Yeah. <laughs> hey, boss, you ain't in any trouble. I don't know. Gee, bullseye, boss. Yeah. Yeah, I guess this new gun will do until I get my old one back. Well, uh, there's nothing like a workout with a target to keep your aim in shape, Shorty. You know, I got a funny idea about that, boss. Yeah? I don't care if my aim ain't so good as long as the other guys ain't either. <laughs> I'll get it, Shorty. All right. Hello? Mikey? Well, 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 Inspector Faraday, my favorite cop. Mm hmm How'd you guess? Oh, how could I miss those low, dulcet tones, Inspector? I want you down here in ten minutes, Blackie, or I'll send for you. Well, that's fine, but where's down here? The Ashley Hotel, room 305. You won't have to send for me, Inspector. I'll be right down. Mm -hmm. Say, boss, uh, Faraday hasn't got you jumping through a rope, has he? Mm, room 305, Ashley Hotel. Shorty, that's Alice Manletter's room. <laughs> Third floor, please. Watch your step getting out. Thank you. Come on. How are you, Inspector? 
Holy Mac... Yeah, Blackie, she's dead. Dead? As if you didn't know. Now, wait a minute. How did you know about this, Faraday? O'Hara, the taxi driver, got suspicious, so reported to headquarters. Oh. From his description, I knew it was you, and then I got suspicious. So you're going around impersonating me now, eh, Blackie? Well, you should be flattered. Why did you kill her? Wait a minute, Faraday. Okay, boys, cover him. Now, don't be a dope. I promised to look after this girl. She was all right when I left her a little while ago. Yeah, maybe. After we discovered the body, the boys and I waited for you to make an appearance. We knew you'd be back. Now, Faraday, listen. This girl was Arthur Manletter's niece. Mm-hmm. And I'll take care of whoever was responsible for her murder. No, no, I'll do that, Blackie. You killed her. Now, that's your gun in her hand. My gun? But I don't see how that... We checked the serial numbers, Blackie. I don't care what you checked. Mm -hmm. You can't take me in for this. I didn't kill her, I tell you. Okay, maybe not. Maybe the serial number on this gun is wrong. You know what a paraffin test is, Blackie? Oh, sure, I know. All right. Well, we'll get down to headquarters and cover your hand with paraffin. Fine. Then we'll be able to tell whether you fired a gun in the last couple of hours. Now, Inspector, will you listen? Yeah. This girl came to New York this morning. Mm -hmm. She wasn't supposed to know anybody in town. Mm -hmm. And then she told me she'd met a friend. Well, what are you trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that somebody killed Alice Manletter, and I've got to be free to find out who did it. Well, you won't be. I'll see to that personally. And now, oh, wait a minute now. What are you doing in that girl's don't, handbag? Don't get scared, Inspector, please. Well, you, what are you doing? You've got four cops with guns on me. Yeah? This isn't a trick. I might find something here that will help me track down the murderer. Now, we've searched this whole place, Tom Blackie. There's nothing here. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. What are you taking out of that bag? Well, I don't know yet. It's, uh, it's just a piece of paper. Well, I'll take it. Mm, what's this? Boston 5, Zealand, Zealand. Louisiana 3, Saskatchewan, Tennessee 2, Nevada. Yeah, yeah Nevada, go ahead. Well, what are you doing? I'm just writing down what you've said. Well, this doesn't make sense. Missouri 1, 3, Denver 4, France... Friends? Well, you see, Faraday, that's a code. Well, you were going to have plenty of time to work it out, Blackie. Come on, let's get going. I'm going to give you a hand of paraffin test to find out whether you fired a gun recently. And if you have, take it from me, pal. You'll have to do some talking to keep your head above water. <laughs> well, I'm afraid, Inspector, the only way I can keep my head above water is to duck you. <laughs> Boston Blackie apparently is in a spot. And, uh... Speaking of spots, so was a friend of mine the other day. You see, a lady I know of looked out of her window one morning, and it was such a lovely day, she felt like singing. (laughs) And all of a sudden, she remembered it was wash day. Oh, shucks. So she got ready to do her wash and found she was out of soap. Well, time was wasting, so she borrowed some from her next-door neighbor. A soap she'd heard a lot about but never tried before. Yes, you guessed it. It was Soapy Rich Rinso. And when she saw what mountains of suds Rinso made... Well, 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 what do you know? And how quickly those Rinso suds soaked her clothes dazzling white, and how she only had to give the very dirty places a few quick finger rubs because Rinso gets out more dirt, she started singing all over again like this. Rinso white, Rinso white, happy little wash day song. Rinso white, Rinso white, bird is sing it all day long. Your fine feathered friend has a message to send, so listen, you can't go wrong. Rinso white, Rinso white, happy little wash day song. Sing your way through your next wash day with Rinso. <laughs> Boston Blackie is in Inspector Faraday's office awaiting the police laboratory report that will show whether he has fired a gun within the past few hours so that Faraday can build a complete case against him for the murder of the girl in the Ashley Hotel. How does it feel, Blackie? To be sitting there just waiting for a report that could send you to the chair? Are you nervous? Boston 5, Zealand, Zealand. That's the first word. Now, you take the first letters of each word and you get buzz. Great. Ha! <laughs> How do you do it, Blackie? Hmm? You get... Bzz. That's right. Yeah. Now we know everything. Who killed the girl, what her mother's maiden name was, and what town she was born in. That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. <laughs> After the first letter, there's the number five. Hmm. See, that could be the fifth vowel. You know, A-E-I-O-U. That's right. Or do you? Yes. Then the word would spell B-U-Z-Z. Marvelous. Buzz. 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 Inspector, this is a clue to the murder. Oh. Now, using that system of spelling out the first letters of each word... The note reads, buzz, listen, made, off. Yeah. What does that mean? 
I wish I knew. Yeah, Faraday. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Thanks. Now, well, that was it, Blackie. The test showed you fired a gun, all right. And the gun we found next to the girl's body was yours. Now, Inspector, I lost my gun, and it's true, I fired another. But I was just practicing. Sure, sure, on a live target. Oh. You don't expect me to believe that, do you, Blackie? Well, frankly, no. You killed her, and then you put her gun, your gun, in her hand. After wiping off your fingerprints, of oh, course. Oh, oh, that's an old trick, Blackie, an old one. I'm surprised at you. Hey, Matthews? Inspector? Take Blackie down to the cell floor and lock him up. We'll book him later. Right, Chief. Come on, Blackie. Okay, okay. Well, you look very nice today, Matthews. New uniform? Who's your tailor? You won't be able to go to him for a long time. <laughs> you know, good old Matthews. Snappy clothes and patted a match. Say, Inspector, may I wash my hands? Well, they're hmm. covered with ink from that fingerprint pad. Is it okay? <laughs> oh, sure, sure. But keep an eye on him, Matthews. I'll beat it, both of you. I'm thinking. Thinking, huh? I'd love to watch. Oh, come on, Matthews. Lock me up. So long, Inspector. Faraday said I could wash my hands, Matthew. Remember? Go ahead, but no tricks. Here's the washroom. But remember, I'll be right back here with my gun in my hand. Oh, goody. I'll let you in on a little secret, Blackie. What's that? The inspector brought in a half a dozen extra cops from another precinct. Just to make sure you didn't break out of here. No. Only half a dozen? Well, I'm flattered. Uh, by the way, Matthews, did you take a shower this morning? No, last night. Well, you need another one. Now. Hey, quit splashing water all over me. I can't see. Hey, give me my gun. Me... Uh, not a chance. I'm going to gag you, Matthews, and lock you in here. Come on, turn around. There. Now try and yell. And I want to borrow your uniform. If there are strange cops here, they'll think I'm one of them. You see, I'm leaving in your uniform. Come on, Matthews. Come on, take it off. <laughs> Blackie, if Faraday ever finds this waterfront hideout of ours, you know we're sunk. Oh, Faraday couldn't find a skunk in a perfume shop. Will you stop worrying? Okay, okay. What do we do next, boss? Well, nothing until I get that long-distance call through to Arthur Manletter. The operator's trying to reach him in San Francisco now. So after we reach him, so what? Well, I won't know, Shorty, till I talk to him. You see, the only thing I've been able to do since I walked out of headquarters an hour ago was to break the code we found in that girl's bag. It read, buzz, listen, made, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me that before. Yes, yes, I know. But those words don't make sense. However, suppose we try an association. You mean we're going to join a club? Oh, cut it out, Shorty, please. Now, for instance, what does the word buzz make you think of? A B. That's right. Now, let's say the first word is B. Yeah. Now, the second word in the code message is listen. Uh Uh-huh. What does that make you think of? Listen, I don't know. Hey, wait a minute, boss. Yeah? Don't tell me. Don't tell me now. I'll get it. Listen, listen. The word is here. Oh, so the message starts, be here. Mm-hmm. Then the last two words are maid and off. Oh, by the way, Shorty, what's the maid's day off? Thursday, if anybody still has got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thursday's right. So the message reads, be here Thursday. Oh, that's it. Yesterday was Thursday, the day the gal came to town. Sure. Ooh, that's the code, all right. Only what good... There's my call now. All right. Hello? Blackie, this is Manletter in San Francisco. Oh, hello, Arthur. Blackie, what's happened? I just heard the radio said that Alice has been murdered. The police were searching for you. It's not true, is it, Blackie? Yes, yes, I'm afraid it's true, Arthur. But you know I didn't do it. Well, of course you didn't. I don't know how it happened, but I'm going to find out. Blackie, look, I feel terrible. Oh, this is shit. the 20th birthday. The trip was a present from me. 20th birthday? Oh, uh, oh, wait a minute, Arthur. Is, uh, is she a brunette? Oh, no, she had the most beautiful blonde hair you ever saw. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Arthur, your niece wasn't murdered. What? It wasn't Alice. Now, take my word for the, it. The radio said... Never mind the radio. Your niece wasn't murdered, and I'm going to find her, Arthur. You'll hear from me. Thanks, Blackie. Thanks. Call me as soon as you know anything, will you? I will. Goodbye. Now, why did you tell him that for Blackie? Because it's true, Shorty. You see, I never saw the real Alice Manletter. I took it for granted she was the girl in the hotel room. Oh. But that girl said she was 18, and Manletter's niece is 20. And the color of her hair settles it. Okay, but what happens now? Well, the real Alice Manletter left the hotel this morning with a man. Uh-huh. The cab driver gave me the address, but she wasn't there, of mm-hmm. course. They, they evidently got off there, but must have walked down the street to another house. Well, what do we do first? Well, let's see. First, we've got to get a couple of messenger uniforms. Yeah. Then you'll take one side of the street, and I'll take the other, and we'll ring every doorbell and say we have a wire for Alice Manletter. Well, what good will that do? Whoever is holding Alice will know it's a trick and will try to grab us. That's what I'll be waiting for. <laughs> Uh, 
A uh, telegram for Ellis, man letter. Ain't nobody here for that name. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. There ain't nobody in this block for that name either. I don't know. I've lived here for 40 years. Gee, this reminds me of Alan's Alley. Uh, should I try the next block? Well, we'll try it together, but I got two more houses to go. Wait for me. Okay. I've got to find that girl, Shorty. Okay, boss. If it's a girl, you'll find her. What do you want? Telegram for Alice Manletter. Did you come in? Well, is, uh, is Miss Manletter here? She, uh, she's got a sign for this person. Yeah. Ah, nice place you have here. I, uh, I noticed a sign outside saying this was a doctor's uh, home. In here, please. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Hey, what's this? See if he is armed, Otto. Yeah, I'll see. Keep your gun on him, Joe. Yeah, well. Hey, here's his gun here, Doctor. Here, in this card case. Boston Blackie. We were hoping you would come. It took you a little longer than we thought. Oh, you knew I'd be here, huh? The girl said she was supposed to meet you in the hotel lobby. Uh-huh. And Otto here made a mistake and thought she was one of us. I see. So that's what happened. Otto was supposed to meet one girl, he met another. He thought she was someone else, and she thought he was someone else. Simple blunder. Oh, oh, oh. you mean the super race has made a simple blunder? But everything has been taken care of. This girl knows no one else in the city, and very soon, she will know nothing at all. Oh, I see. And that goes for me, too, I suppose. Yeah, well. Ouch, but you take it easy with my hands back there, boy. <laughs> I am tight, Otto. Mm. See, too? Easy. Good, good. Uh. We have only a few moments. Yeah, that's right. You just listen to the newscast. You better work fast, boys. You have only a few moments. Warsaw, Paris, Berlin. American oh, kick. Take him in the other room. Better carry him. Yeah. Help me, Joe. Yeah. I open the door for you. Just throw him in. The lens on his neck. It's too bad. Ready, Joe? Throw him. Yeah. Who is that? <laughs> Well, I, I, I think it's me, Boston Blackie. Oh. You're, uh, you're Alice Manletter, of course. Oh, Boston Blackie, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks. So much has happened to me. Yes, I think I know most of it. You think we'll get out of here? Well, we're certainly going to try. Let's do something about these ropes. Uh, you're tied up too, aren't you? Yes. Well, they weren't nice enough to leave some lights on so I could see what it was doing. Well, there's the first one off. Now for my legs. Say, I just thought of something. That girl accomplice must have lifted my gun when I was up there, figuring that if I found out she was a spy, she could take care of me. Oh! Well, the legs are free. Now I'll untie you. Thank you. What's that? They're going to send a message. We'll be able to hear what they say. The microphone's right up against the wall. Now, your hands are free. Work on your ankles. And I'll listen. All right. Let's catch him on. Hand over four, two. Let's catch him on. S-H-O-E-S. Shoes. One, Nevada, ten bucks. A, N, D, and shoes and... Uh... Let's catch you, one. Two, one, Louisiana, three, Nevada, Georgia, Wisconsin, one, ten tipping. Ceiling wax. Shoes and ceiling wax. One, five, Tennessee, five, Missouri, Nevada. A, U, T, U, M, N, autumn. Shoes and ceiling wax, autumn. That, that's uh, the message so far. Geneva, one, Louisiana, one, and over one, ten bucks. Louisiana 1, Nevada, Chicago 2, Louisiana 4, Tennessee. That spells Galahad and Lancelot. They stopped sending. Yeah. What did they say, do you know? Now, keep working on those ropes, Alice. Yes. Now, here's the message. Shoes and sealing wax. That's from Alice in Wonderland. The word missing is ships. Well, that could be the first word in the message. That's the way it works? Sure. Now, let's see. The next, next thing was autumn. Autumn, autumn, autumn. Uh, what's that make you think of, Alice? I don't know. Autumn leaves, perhaps? That's it. That's it. Then they said Galahad and Launcelot. They were two knights of the round table. Two knights. That's it. Ships leave to night. That's the message. We've got to get out and stop that convoy from sailing. There'll be a U-boat pack waiting, waiting for it sure. I've worked the knot loose, I think. Good. Now give me your ropes. I'm going to need them. What are you going to do? Well, they'll be in for us in a minute. Is, um, is there a chair in the room? There's one next to me. I'm leaning against Good. it. Good. I'll put it alongside the door and stand on it. When the Nazis come in, you'll be in back of the door and slam it shut behind them. But you'll see it. Oh, no, 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 not a chance. The room is too dark. I'll drop a noose over them, but quick. Shh. I think I hear something. Okay, now I'll carry this chair over, and you stand behind the door. Already, Blackie. Yeah, me too. We'll do it, Blackie, just like you said. Ah, come in with me, Joe. 
Now, Alice. Your gun. Get out your gun, Otto. I can't get it out. My arms are pinned down. Here's a present, Nussie. Oh. Now, don't be jealous, pal. Here's one for you, too. Oh, you can take it, huh, kid? Okay. Well, I guess that does it, Alice. What's going on in there? Otto, oh, go. Wa- watch this, Alice. <clears throat> Come in here, Dr. Quick. What is look? This is... Alice. Alice, get on that telephone in the other room quick. Tell the FBI what you know. Then call Inspector Faraday while I keep an eye on these Nazis. Now, when you get him, I hold want it, you... Hold it, Mikey, hold it. Don't move. I've got you cold this time. Well, hot or cold, you'll hate yourself in the morning, Faraday, but yeah. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. How did you manage it? I managed it, boss. What? I got worried, and I couldn't bust in here alone, so I called your old friend Faraday. Oh. Yeah, and I landed up here with both feet in ten minutes flat. When you do anything with your feet, Faraday, flat is the right word. Oh. Thanks, Alice, for clearing me with Faraday. Oh, Blackie, you're wonderful. Oh. You saved my life and broke up a spy ring, and it doesn't bother you a bit. Don't you feel good about it? Oh, I should say I do. So good, I'm going to celebrate. Alone? Oh, no, no. You're coming with me, Alice. But first, we're going to call your Uncle Arthur. What are you going to say? Well, I'm going to tell him I've spent a lot of time looking for you. But from now on, I'm looking after you. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment with an interesting preview of next week's program. Now, you know those rich Rinso suds I've been telling you are such a help on wash day? Well, they're just as big a help come dishwashing time. Yes, ma'am. Milder than ever Rinso is easy on your hands, too. Doesn't get them rough and red. So, for dishwashing and for all the soap and water jobs around the house, better get Rinso to help you out. <laughs> Matthews, you say this is a complete record of the people who came into Gordon's store yesterday? That's right, Inspector. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Van Dyke Smythe, George Ellis, Lady Mary Andrews. Hey, quite an exclusive list of customers for a small shop. Yeah, ain't it? Let's see now. Uh, uh, this name here. Was he a customer? Yeah, Inspector. Gordon says he was in about noon, but that could have been a coincidence. Matthews, when a string of pearls is missing from a certain store and a certain party was in that certain store and the certain party's name was Boston Blackie, that's no coincidence. Friends, of course you know the tremendous part our Merchant Marine is playing in the war. But did you know that the Merchant Marine is being expanded to meet increasing supply problems on every front? to meet the universal demand for a strong post-war merchant marine? Yes, six ships a day instead of five will soon be coming off the ways of our shipyards, and every one of them must be manned by 40 to 50 men. So, if you have had previous sea experience, or if you want to get into a well-paying job where everything you do will help to win the war and to build your own personal future, then join the United States Merchant Marine. Apply at once by wiring collect to United States Merchant Marine... Washington, D.C. Warm weather's here, and that means greater danger from perspiration. Protect yourself. Use Life Boy in your daily bath. You know, of seven leading brands, Life Boy gives you the most soap for your money. And its rich, purifying Life Boy lather grease with your skin. And don't forget, Life Boy's the only soap especially made to stop... Be sure to listen at this same time next week for another exciting adventure with Boston Blackie. You can see Chester Morris as Boston Blackie on the screen at your favorite movie theater. Boston Blackie's latest Columbia picture is One Mysterious Night, soon to be released. Richard Lane appears as Inspector Faraday, music by Charles Cornell. This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night for Boston Blackie, brought to you by the makers of Rinso, the soap that gets clothes. <laughs>
Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.